Good morning, all you beautiful trans people on my phone. Welcome to Trans in the Am. I'm your host, Aaron Green. Let's get into it. Starting the day, the U.S. Supreme Court has declined to hear a case regarding transgender health care. The U.S. Supreme Court on Monday declined to hear a bid by a Catholic hospital in California to avoid a lawsuit over its refusal to let its facilities be used to perform a hysterectomy on a transgender patient who sought the procedure as a part of gender transition from female to male. The justices turned away an appeal by Mercy San Juan Medical Center, a Sacramento area hospital owned by Dignity Health, and let stand a lower court ruling that revived Evan Minton's lawsuit, accusing it of intentionally discriminating against him in violation of California law because he is transgender. The hospital let Minton's physician perform the procedure at a different facility in its system a few days later. Some good news to start off the day. Congratulations, Evan, on your big W. In other news, a proposed law in Quebec threatens to out trans people every time they have to show their ID. A proposed Quebec bill to amend the civil code and change family law sets transgender rights back a decade, according to LGBTQ and trans activists. Celeste Trianon, trans rights spokesperson at the Center for Gender Advocacy, said of the bill, quote, This is truly the most directly transphobic bill ever proposed in Quebec, and also in Canada. Proposed Thursday by Justice Minister Simon Jolin Barrett, Bill 2 has several troubling elements, according to Trinan, uh, including a stipulation people can only request a sex change on their birth certificate after undergoing gender-affirming surgery on their sex organs. The person's gender would then have to be reconfirmed by a doctor who did not perform the surgery. For people who don't meet the surgical requirement to have their designated sex change on their ID, Bill 2 allows for the addition of a separate gender category on documentation. But that doesn't solve the problem, according to Trinan, as an ID with the gender category added would be a clear sign someone is trans, opening them up to possible discrimination and harassment. My hope is that this bill will fail, but as they say, time will tell. Uh, best wishes to all of my Canadian trans friends who may be affected by this. In other news, the BBC has rejected complaints that it published a transphobic article. The BBC has rejected the complaints and has instead given a commitment to covering different viewpoints in the name of impartiality. The corporation has faced protests outside of some of its original newsrooms, petitions from trans campaign groups, and disquiet among many LGBTQ staff members over a piece published online last week entitled, We're Being Pressured Into Sex by Some Trans Women. On Monday, the BBC said that it stood by the article about the experience of some lesbians, adding it had been subject to a rigorous editing process and that it met its editorial guidelines. The article cited lesbian sex worker Lily Cade, who took to her blog Tuesday after her bump in attention from the BBC, to write about how trans women are, among other things, predators. The Unabomber-style manifesto talks about how, if no one else is willing to, Lily Cade herself will go about murdering trans women. The things that Lily Cade wrote are horrifying. If you seek out her words for yourself, please keep that in mind. I hope that one day we can all live together in peace and happiness, and not have our hearts mired in hate. That will wrap up our show this Thursday. A big thank you to all patrons and to you, the viewer. Uh, if you like the show, please leave a comment and a like to help support the channel. And as always, take care and stay unique.